so next is uh, inotropes and uh, monitoring so what are the vasopressors inotropes and inodilators so vasopressors cause vasoconstrictions and vasopressors increase the systemic resistance on pulmonary vascular resistance inotropes increase the myocardial contractility inodilator increase the myocardial contractility and vasodilate so how do you classify vasodilators inotropes and inodilators there are four main types number one is catecholamines that includes adrenaline adrenaline and synthetic dibutamine and cephalopemetics are ephedrine metaraminol and phosphodiesterase inhibitors are milrinone emrinone and aminophylline endogenous peptides vasopressin insulin and glucagon and cardiac glycosides are digoxin others are calcium and uh, levosimendan a calcium sensitizer phenylephrine is only a, is only a vasopressor due to its pure alpha 1 receptor action and does not possess its inotropic action catecholamines and sympathomimetics they increase the cyclic amp and intracellular calcium an affinity of different substances of adrenergic receptor explain the range of uh, clinical effects stimulation of alpha receptors mediate the vasoconstriction stimulation of beta 1 receptors improve the myocardial conductility and stimulation of beta 2 receptor increase the heart rate and this is a table showing inotropes and their target receptors so adrenaline acts in a very good strength on alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 and beta 2 receptors noradrenaline acts better in alpha 1 and alpha 2 than beta 1 and beta 2 and isoprenaline only acts on beta 1 and dobutamine acts better on beta 1 and dopamine acts better on beta 1 so phosphodiesterase inhibitors inhibit the building of cyclic amb and myocytes they cause positive inotropy, vasodilation, and inodilators. They include anoxy, anoxymone, milrinone, and emrinone. Emrinone, milrinone, anoxynone, these are phosphodiesterase inhibitors. Endogenous peptides like vasopressin is the most commonly used peptide vasopressor. Endogenous vasopressin is released from the posterior pituitary. Vasopressin acts as a vascular smooth muscle, V1, mm, and oxytocin receptors causing vasoconstriction. Vasopressin may also activate vascular smooth muscle V2 receptors resulting in vasodilation. In septic shock, exogenous administration of vasopressin may reverse the vasodilatory shock. So cardiogenic glycosides inhibit the sodium potassium ATPase in cell membranes and they increase intracellular sodium concentration thus displacing the bound intracellular calcium ions. They decrease the calcium outflow, raising the calcium concentration, resembling like the digoxin. So digoxin acts by inhibiting the sodium potassium ATPase and uh, endogenous peptides. Phosphodiesterase inhibits inhibit the cyclic AMP and catecholamines increase cyclic AMP. And then what would you use same inotropes in the and cardiogenic shock and septic shock? No. For cardiogenic shocks, uh, it involves low cardiac output, high filtering pressure, and high systemic. Uh, uh, vascular resistance inodilators like phosphodiesterase inhibitors and dobutamine improve the conductivity while decreasing the systemic vascular resistance adrenaline is also appropriate as its predominant effect is on the contractility specific vasodilators such as gtn may decrease the afterload and myocardial work in septic shock we have uh, because it's characterized by low uh, svr and high cardiac output so vasoconstriction such as noradrenaline and vasopressin increases the svr the butamine adrenaline is sometimes used to improve the contractility. How does a transducer for arterial central pressure work? There are different components of invasive monitoring. So first one is intravascular catheter that is connected with the continuous column of fluid. Then there is a transducer, usually a strain gauge connected to the distensible diaphragm and then amplified in the display. So pressure wave is transmitted by the column of fluid to the thin diaphragm and movement of the diaphragm caused by the arterial pressure is detected by a strain gauge as the diaphragm is stretched wires in the transducer are also stretched and their electrical resistance changes and the resistance signal is converted to a pressure signal by a calibration the signal from transducer is amplified and converted to a graphical output on the display how can cardiac output be measured non-invasively there are three techniques all rely on assumptions and estimations Analysis of arterial pressure waveform. A pressure wave is generated by ejection of the stroke volume into the arterial vasculature. Analysis of the wave can be used to estimate the volume that caused it. Allows the calculation of the cardiovascular parameters including stroke volume, cardiac output, and systemic vascular resistance. 
so one is lithium dilution cardiac output one is pulse contour analysis cardiac output so lidco and pico monitors analyze the arterial wave from measured in a peripheral or central artery this method calculates the area under the systolic portion of the arterial pressure waveform in order to estimate the stroke volume uncalibrated monitors rely on uh, inbuilt uh, uh, nomograms esophageal doppler monitor estimation of aortic valve area based on the height and weight probe estimate the velocity of the blood in the descending thoracic aorta so nice recommends using this esophageal doppler monitor um, to guide the perioperative fluid and vasopressor management in the high risk surgical patients thoracic impedance technique now superseded by bioreactance bioreactance technology Flow of current through the thoracic is affected by the blood volume in the thoracic aorta. Thank you.